made our Mother Earth of the birth and multitude of humankind. You could also advertise the greatest Hellene prince, the Phrygian spot for me. But it was not me, but my name only held up against the spears of Greece. I myself was sheathed away in films of air, set down here where you see me now, the house of Proteus, chosen because the most tempered of men, so you can guard my safe honor from better ladies. So here I am. Meanwhile, my ill adventured lord assembled an army that could track me down the trail of my abduction and assaulted Ilium's towers. Because of me, inside the waters of Scam and their lives were lost in numbers. Patient I am cursed by all, and for the Hellings, let the flame of a great war. Why do I go on living then? Yet I have heard from Hermes that I shall yet make my home in Sparta with my lord. He shall know that I never had a thought of any bed with any man. Here, while yet moaning against the pond of sun, see I was safe from there. And now he is dead and hidden in the dark. His son pursues me from my hand. But I, remembering my first husband, cling a suppliant here in the tomb of Proteus to help to keep my marriage intact. Thus, though I wear the name of guilt and griefs, here I keep my body uncontaminated by disgrace. Advantage. 
fish and his wife with him. Surely all the archives were sailing home together. They were, but a storm scattered them in all directions. Where were they when the storm fell? Cresting the rollers of the mid Aegean. <laughs> No one. He is generally reported as dead. Dead? What shall I do? <laughs> and Lita, is she alive? No. Lita is dead and gone. And he will tell us disgrace. Broke her heart. So they say. She was of royal blood. She hanged herself. Two sons like the Darius. Are they alive or dead? Dead? And not dead. Of them, there are two different accounts. Tell me the truth. Oh, my poor mother, how can I bear it? It is said they were deified in the form of stars. That would be well. And what was the other? That uh, shame for their sister drove them to take their own lives with the sword. <laughs> but enough of tales. I have wept for these things once already. My reason for coming to the king's palace was to see the prophet of Spianor and ask for divine help in getting a fair wind for Cyprus. Will you take me to her? Um, an oracle of Apollo told me I was to settle in Cyprus and give to that land the name of Salamis in remembrance of that other island where I was born. From here to Cyprus is plain sailing, but you must get clear of this land before Theo Clementus sees you. He is the king of this palace. At present, he is away slaughtering wild beasts with the age of pounds. Every Greek he captures here, he kills. Why, don't ask me, I won't tell you. What good would it do you? Just as you say. And thank you for telling me. The gods reward you for your kindness. You are like Helen, only in appearance. In heart, you are utterly different. I pray she may never reach home, but come to a bad end. But you, good luck be with you always. Strong grief says strong lamenting. You shall be patterned a part of my crying soul.
wearied by peace and tempt by heart with love and guilt. Then, terror loved of Zeus, soothes his cares and sh shares his bed, sits the swift footed Hermes down. Found me gathering in a glade, fresh roses folded in my gown, an offering for the holy maid. Oh, Aphrodite, mistress of deceit, what have you done to prostrate Greece and Troy and slaughter her feet?
has my husband found? Does he even live to see the sun? Charity the sky? Or has his life begun? Unless I soil, whatever is to come, and love, and soft it and use it for the best. You wrote it, River of Hope. This chariot race against Thunemias in Pisa. How I wish that on that same day when you were prepared as a banquet for the gods, that you had ended your life forthwith between immortal teeth. And then you could never have begotten my father, who in his turn was fathered by his wife Arope to Agamemnon and myself, a celebrated pair of sons. In fact, my opinion is, and I say this without any wish to boast, that we marshal the greatest of armadas against Troy, a monarch showing our authority not to superior force, but to the willing obedience of the fighting men of Hellas. Many of those men are dead. Many others rejoice in a happy escape from the perils of the sea and have returned home, bringing with them tokens and keepsakes of those who died. But I, for all the long years since I overthrew the towers of Troy, I've been an unhappy wanderer upon the gray wastes of the stormy oceans. I long to reach my own country, but the gods have not thought me worthy. I have sailed into every desolate landing place, every hostile port on the Libyan coast. Every time I near the shores of my own country, a storm drives me away. No favoring wind ever fills my sail to bring me home. Now, here I am on this coast, a wretched castaway. All my friends lost, my ship broken into a thousand pieces against the rocks. But a curiously fitted keel remains intact. <coughs> on this, much difficulty. Much to my surprise, I was able to get ashore with me Helen, whom I dragged off from Troy. What country this is? What nation inhabits it, I have no idea. I could have inquired, but I 
prefer not to meet people in my present embarrassing costume. <laughs> Which decency. <laughs> the man should be kept from sight. A man accustomed to high position feels misfortune more than one inured to it. I am in fact exhausted. No food, no clothes. The rags I have on are what I can say for this shit. As anyone can see. <laughs> <laughs> Rich clothes, soft gowns. The sea has taken them all. But I have my wife, the source of all my sufferings. And before coming up here, I hid her in a cave together with the survivors of my company and ordered them to guard her for me. I have come alone to procure any supplies I could find for them. Well, as soon as I saw this palace, I approached it. The high surrounding walls. The imposing entrance indicate a man of wealth. Sailors in need may hope for something from a well-stocked house. Otherwise, we shall die. For a whole ship's crew, they can get no supplies, can give no help, however willing. Hello there, Porter. Come to the door and take a message in for me. I need help. Who's that at the door? Go away. Capture my wife in Troy, bring her here and hide her in a cave for safety, and now flank another woman with the same name as my wife living in this palace. But she called this woman the daughter of Zeus. Could it be a man by the name of Zeus living on the Nile? <laughs> There's only one Zeus, the one on Olympus. Where in the world is there another Sparta except on the lovely banks of the Rhenia Rotus? Are there 
there are two men named Tendarius. Is there another like a diamond? Another try? I just don't know what to think. Well, after all, the world's a big place. No doubt there are many women with the same names. Many towns, too. There's really nothing to wonder at. Nor is there anything to run away from in a slave's threats. No man can be so uncivilized as to refuse me food. Not well, once he heard my name. The fire of Troy is famous, and so is the man who lit it, known all over the world. Menelaus! I will wait here for the master of the house. That means two things to look out for. First, if the man is a savage, I must hide myself and get back to the ship. But if he shows any softness, I must be sure to ask for the provisions that we need. This, then, was the final humiliation in store for me, that I should beseech a fellow king for bread to keep me alive. Well, I must. Nothing is stronger than necessity. I did not admit that proper, but it was true nonetheless. <laughs> And very well known.
Hecate, bringer of light, send me good dreams. I am not a dream. Hecate has not sent me. But neither am I the husband to two women. What other woman's husband are you? Well, I left her hidden in a cave. <laughs> I was bringing her back from Troy. You have no other wife than me. I am not mad. Can there be something wrong with my eyes? There's nothing wrong. When you look at me, do you not know that I'm your wife? In appearance, you are the same. Oh, the mystery of it baffles me. Look at me. What plain of proof do you want? You are like her. That I do not deny. What evidence do you trust with not your eyes? My difficulty is this. I have another wife. I did not go to Troy. That was a phantom. And who could make phantoms that live and breathe? Air. It was the gods' work. That wife of yours is made of air. What do the gods made her? I have never heard of such a thing. Hera made me as a substitute, so the parents should not have me. What? Then you were here in Troy at the same time? Her name can be in any number of places. A person can only be in one place. Let go. I had enough to plague me before I came. Will you leave me and go away with your fancy wife? Yes. <laughs> you are too much like Helen. <laughs> so, bye. Kill me to say so. I have found you, my husband, and now I cannot keep you. The memories of what I went through in Troy are more convincing than you are. Is anyone ever so miserable? My husband is leaving me once more. I shall never see my own home or live in my own country again. Menelaus! Menelaus! Here you are at last! I wandered all over this outlandish place trying to find you. Go and you left behind sent me. Well, what is the matter? Oh, you're not being robbed by the natives, I hope. Something extraordinary, but the word does not quite describe it. Tell me what it is. It is something strange to judge by the state you are in. Oh, it was hardship for nothing. That is no news to me. Tell me what has happened. Our wife is gone, what? just vanished in the air, just went up and disappeared. And now that she's in the sky, why, the cave where we were guarding her is empty. But before she left, she said, Oh, you poor pitiless Trojans and suffering Greeks. It was a trick of Hera that sent you to your death on the backs of its commander. Paris did not possess Helen after all. And now that I've stayed as long as I have to stay, I'm going as the fates ordained to the sky that formed me. Those who repeat curses on Helen were mistaken. Helen did nothing wrong. Oh, oh, there you are, daughter of Nina. <laughs> you, you were here all of the time. I reported you as going to the region of the stars, being unaware <laughs> that you had wings. <laughs> well, now, you won't play any more tricks on us like you did before. You gave enough trouble to your husband and the others who were at Troy. <laughs> it's true. This proves it. All she said is confirmed. Oh, Helen! Oh. oh, how I have longed for this day. Longed to hold you in my arms. Now you are mine. Year after I was here, cracked by. And now joy has come for you are here. Who am I laughing? So much since then has passed. What should I tell you? What ask? Oh, first or last? My hair reeks wild in the wind for joy. My eyes are roomy, but my hands feel your dear form and taste pleasure so long denied. Oh, oh no dearer sight than this. All grief forgotten. The daughter of Zeus, you are mine to have and hold. I claimed you once when the godly twins, your brothers, rode their white horses under the torch lit night and their shouts of blessing echoed. I could again once long ago. And Hera stole you from my house. It was empty. Now heaven leads us on to this happy day, to a still happier one. Good to beat still. We are united. Joy was long on its way. 
Now fortune smiles and may blessings follow. Blessings indeed. We too pray the same prayer. For your faith and hers are one. You cannot suffer and she be safe. Friends, pagans past is lost and steam. My husband is mine once more, and my long despair is over. Woo! We have each other. In truth, I dimly guess the endless chain of the keys days wore on. The Queen of Gods was at work. Oh, there's more joy in my tears than all the sorrows of all the past. Bliss beyond words, sweeter than heart and hope. I hold you close to my breast. And you to mine. For you who we thought was living in the shadow of Mount Ida, behind the sad battlements of Troy. Oh, Helen, how did you steal from home that day? The story you seek me yet in pain. Cruel to suffer. Cruel to recapture. Tell me. For mortals must accept the gods' gifts as best we may. How can I speak? The word will choke me. Speak, for my sake. I felt no guilty lust. I did not fly over the sea to seek the unlawful bed of an eastern prince. What god, what, what fate then stole you from me? Hermes conveyed me here, to the banks of the Nile. The son of Zeus, at whose command? I have wept long since, and now I weep again in fear. My enemy is the queen of Olympus. Hera, how have we incurred her curse? Who will reproach that I am born low from that mountain, where the three bright immortals came to adorn their beauty on which the famous judgment has been given. But, but why must Hera spite be vented on you for judgment she resented? To spoil Hera to the brightest I have been promised to. With you. She sent me to this desert land, weeping. <coughs> In your place, a flight of phantom, Helen. All too at home there is more sorrow yet. My mother what of her? is dead. She tied the noose with her own hand. I guess. Believing that I had shaped your bed. God. Oh, what of Hermione? What joy has she? What hope to get husband and child when all men point at me? Paris, you who have murdered my whole house, your deed has brought death to you and to your city to 10,000 well-armed men of Greece. And I am cursed, unhappy, not untrue, exiled from force, guiltless of broken vows, and robbed of city, home, my husband and my peace. And if only you meet with good luck for the future, it will compensate you for all that is past. Oh, Menelaus, I realize that something has made you happy, but I cannot quite grasp what it is. <laughs> oh, can you share with me your good fortune? Of course you must share it, old fellow. Is this not the Lady Helen, the prize of all we went through at Troy? This lady was never at Troy. Oh, all that sweat and blood for a ghost! <laughs> yes, Hera was in a rage because of the judgment of Paris. Is not this lady here, then, the lady who is truly your wife? Is. You must take my word for it. Oh, my dear! Oh. <laughs> the ways of the gods are elaborate and mysterious. They bring both good and bad fortune alike. But in the end, all is all right. One man suffers, but soon his suffering is over and he prospers beautifully. Another man does not suffer. But when his turn comes, his luck deserts him, and he perishes miserably. Now, you both had your share of ill fortune. You are badly spoken of, and you suffered in the storm of battle. But as long as you follow what you wanted, you achieved nothing. But then the gods came along of their own accord, and you were a happy man. You did not disgrace your old father and your brothers, as some people say. Oh, oh, how well I remember your wedding day. I can see it all now. The horses yoked in four and me running along carrying a torch. And you and Menelaus in your carriage, leaving your happy home to be married. Oh, oh. A slave. The affairs of his masters mean a lot. He shares in their joys and their sufferings, or he's not a man. Oh, I was born a slave. 
but there have been slaves who are noble, and they were free in mind, if not in heart. And I want to be like those. Otherwise, they have only two misfortunes. You must either take orders from all of those around you, and at the same time, feel like a slave. <laughs> well, you're a good old fellow, and you've borne your fair share of hardship in my service in the field. Now that you're here to share in my good fortune, go back to the others. Tell them what has happened. Explain the present situation. Warn them to wait on the coast and be prepared in case we have to make a fight for it, as I expect. Well, and if we should find any way of getting my wife out of this place after meeting so miraculously, they must see to it that we are not caught by the natives. I'll do it, my lord. And I'll tell you this. You can expect nothing from prophets but silliness and lies. Oh, species of sacrifice, sounds of birds. Oh, there's no truth to them at all. What good can a bird do mankind? It's just all nonsense. Like Calchas saw his friends die in battle, but never gave out a word or a sign. And more so, held the Trojan, and his city was sacred. Now you may say that the gods told him not to say anything, but why trust in prophets? Rather make your offering to the gods and leave the prophets alone. Prophecy was invented to entrap men by promises of success. No man ever achieved wealth without labor by studying sacrifice. Uh -oh. The best oracle is care and common sense. I entirely agree with the old man about oracles. To make friends with the gods is better than all the skill of prophets. So far, then, everything goes well. Tell me of your adventures with Troy. I gain nothing by knowing it, but because you are dear to me, I want to share it all that you have suffered. Would you ask me a hundred questions in one? There are shipwrecks in the Aegean. False beacons in Naples lived in Euboea. Cities in Crete and Libya we visited. False watchtowers of Perseus. Why must I tell you all this? I have endured it in reality, and the distress of telling you would make me endure it twice. I'm sorry if I've asked you things too painful to speak of. Leave the rest and tell me one thing. How many years have you wandered over the ridges of the Salt Sea? We were in Troy for ten years. Since then, I have been voyaging for seven summers and seven winters. Seven years? What a terrible, weary time. Even now, after finding you, must not stay. You must leave as quickly as possible. You have escaped the war and the sea, but death waits for you here. What do you mean? Death? The man who holds this palace will kill you. What have I done to deserve that? He wants to marry you. What? I expected a rival to stop to that. A man was proposing to marry my wife? Yes, and to take me by force if I had not escaped him. But how could he have the power? Is he a private person or is it the king? He is the king. The son of Proteus. Oh. I see now what the old woman at the door meant. What outlandish doors have you been standing now? At this door, the king's. I was driven away as a beggar. Oh. Surely you were not begging for food. Well, how dreadful. I was, in fact, begging. Oh. But I did not say so. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt you know all about his plans for marrying you. I do. What I don't know is if you've managed to evade them. Be reassured. Your wife's chastity remains untouched. But what dissuaded him? I would be most happy to believe you. You see this too, where he found the city that is there. I see you have a mattress there. What was that for? I was a suppliant here, praying to escape this marriage. And are there no altars or do the Egyptians reverence a tomb? This was as strong a protection as any temple. And can I not take you with me and sail to home? You are more likely to be killed than never have me as your wife again. God forbid such a cruel fate. And now don't be ashamed to seek your own safety, but escape. Leave you alone? I took Troy for your sake. Better live than be killed for my sake. You counsel me to be a coward. The man who took Troy. Perhaps you think of killing the king. You could not do it. Why not? Is his skin full of proof? You will see it is folly to attempt the impossible. Why then? Shall I meekly hold out my hands to be manical? You're in a trap. We must contrive some way out. Certainly. I would rather be killed in action. There's one way of, of hope. One way of escape and only one. What shall we use? Bride's boldest persuasion. 
need to be prevented from your doing of your right. If it will tell him, at least he will not know who I am. As an ally in his palace, his help is worth a bunch of gods. Do you mean some divine voice that speaks inside these walls? No, I mean his sister. They call her Theodore. Her name is Prophetia. What of her actions? She knows everything. And she'll tell her brother that you are here. If she does, we shall be killed. We'll have no way of hiding. If we both together appeal to her. Yes? Not to tell her brother. If she agreed, we could escape. It's easy. No chance without her help. You must persuade her. She will listen to a woman. At least she will let me approach her as a suppliant. Oh, what if she rejects our appeal? Then you will be killed. But I will be forced into marriage. To consent would prove you false. He could not force you. That is an excuse. I swear solemnly by your life. You swear to die rather than to belong to another man. By the same weapon that kills you, I will lie to your side. Seal that promise. Take my hand. I swear if you die, die too. I swear that if I lose you, I will take my own life. If you die, then our death brings us fame and honor. Oh, here upon this tomb, I will first kill you and then myself. <laughs> oh, but before I do, I'll put up a mighty struggle to win you. Let them all come. I will not disgrace the name I won in Hellas, nor am I going back to Greece to be blackguarded as the man who robbed Thetis of Achilles saw Ajax fall by his own hand was not ready himself to die for his own wife's sake. I am ready with all my heart. The gods have understanding. Your at the burial lies lightly on a brave man killed by his enemies. But to a coward as brave as a crushing rock. Oh God, God let the house, house of Tantalus find good fortune at last, last and be delivered from all their troubles. Oh God, have pity! Menelaus, we are caught! Here comes the priestess Theodore. I can hear them on both of the doors. You must fly. And what is the use? She knows you're here whether she sees you or not. Oh, Menelaus, this is my fate. You have escaped the cruelty of Troy and the other cruel weapons here. Hold the lamp, try to perform your need on. Sanctify every corner of the air with pure ritual that I may draw a holy breath. If any man has polluted this place with an hollow tread, purge my path with flame. Your sacred service done. Carry back the flame to the central part. Helen, I have news for you regarding the people. Your husband and I'll have to come. There he stands before you. He has lost both the ship and the hand of the sun. Unhappy, my lady. What suffering? What escapes you? Not after all your home of voyage, not at least with the white people. For among the gods who stayed in the court, in the court of Zeus, there is no one to dispute about it. Now who once hated you is now your friend. She wishes to bring you both safely to her home. But after that, you have to trust her to return, lest she be known to have bargained with how much you
It is not shameful that you who know the secrets both of heaven from now and to come should not know right from wrong. I am Helen. Hated by all is the woman who betrayed her husband for a wealthy home in Phrygia. But if I can return to Sparta, give their own ears and eyes to prove that they are truly tricked by the gods, <coughs> give me back my good name. I shall see my daughter married to no man who have them. This hateful, homeless life that I live here will end. I shall enjoy the comfort and splendor of my own home. If Menelaus had died across the here before the tomb of your father. Why did Proteus, the guiding spirit of this marble tomb, restore to me my wife, whom Zeus sent here to you in trust for me? Death, I know, forbids that I should receive her from your own hands. But surely your daughter will not allow that men should call you back from the dead to curse your once noble name. We are in her hands. Lord of the underworld, you too I call upon for help. You've received countless bodies of men that fell by my hand. You have your payment. Either restored out of the dead to life, or bid Theonoi prove herself more righteous than this impious king by giving me my wife. If you and the king steal my wife from me, I will tell you now what she has left unsaid. You must know, Theonoi. I have bound myself by solemn oaths. First to engage your brother in combat till one of us kills the other. That is final. But if he will not meet me, but besieges us with hunger here in our sanctuary, then I am resolved first to kill Helen, then myself. Here upon the slab of this monument, that our blood may stream down upon Proteus's grave both lie dead together on this polished stone to wring your heart to soil your father's name forever. Neither your brother nor any other man shall take Helen. I shall take her myself. <coughs> to my home if possible. If not to the dead. But tears you think that I cause my eyes are womanish, that I am perhaps readier to sue than to do. Kill me if that is your mind. The crime will brand you. But make the better choice. Do what is just and right. Let me have my wife. You must, you must judge, judge the annoyed, what, what each has said. said. Make a decision that, that will satisfy everyone. Both nature and inclination call me the piety. I love myself. I am anxious not to call my father's good name. To my brother, I must refuse any service that would turn to his dishonor. So I will try to take him away. And since Tara wishes to help him, I will cast my hope in him. Your appeal to vindicate my father's honor is one which I myself to refuse to live with your wife would be to wrong you. So I 
a long time. You are intimate with the servants. Yes, I see what you mean. Perhaps you could get one of them to get us a fast vehicle. <laughs> How should we escape over there? Will these endless plains with Egyptians all around us? Oh, yes, it's no use. I could hide in the castle. I have my wife and I could kill the king. The annoy would never allow her brother to be killed. She would warn him. Even if we reached the shore, there was no ship to escape in. Mine is at the bottom of the ocean. Listen, a woman's plan might succeed. Will you let me invent a story that you are dead? It may invite ill luck, but if there is something solid to be gained, I will die in fiction. Good. Then I will approach this pagan king in mourning and weeping. Well, how will that help our escape? Your plan seems a bit old-fashioned. I will tell him that you were drowned at sea and asked to prepare an empty tomb for you. Suppose he agrees. Giving me an empty tomb will not save our lives without a ship. Then I will ask him to provide us a ship, by which we may drop your offerings into the lap of the sea. It is a good plan, except for this. If he tells us to perform the rites on land, your story will be of no use. Then I'll tell him it's against free custom to perform those, those rites on land with those who go down from the ship. Yes, that will do. And then I will go on board with you to help in the ritual. Yes, you, of course, chiefly. And all of those who survive the wreck. Once I get my hands on a ship at anchor, my men will be there armed and disciplined. You must see to that. I only pray for strong winds and a favorite voyage. Oh, we will have them. The gods are going to be kind. Oh, by the way, who will you say told you that I was dead? You. Say that you were the sole survivor of the wreck and you saw me the latest ground. Yes, and this strip of sail I've tied around me will confirm your story of the wreck. It was luckily found. Though you at the moment were almost lost. You're a pitiful sight, but that is going to save us. Should I not come inside with you? Should I sit quietly by the tomb? Stay here. The tomb gives you protection. If he tries violence with you, you have your weapons. I must go in now. Change my dress for morning black. Cut my hair short. And tear my face with my nails till the blood runs. I must indeed. No third way. The king discovers our deception. I must die. We pray to you, Queen Hera, stretching our hands towards heaven where you live in star embroidered heights. Take pity on us and save us. We pray to you, child of Dion, Aphrodite, by whom the promise of beauty was won. Why have you never saved him with moral suffering, traffic in lust and falsehood? Crooked intrigue and secret drugs are your instruments of death. Were there but measure in your power, no other gives gifts as sweet as yours. That is all I can say. Sure, no, Sparta, 
from Malaya's bare cliff to this foreign water, clutch the sham prize of many a gory blade, the phantom Helen that mocking Hera made. You who in earnest ignorance would check the deeds of lawless men, and in the clash of weapon on weapon gain honor, you are all stark mad. If men to settle each dispute must needs compete in bloodshed, then when shall violence vanish? Hate me soon. For men and cities live in peace. Why have the sons of Priam received each his portion in chambers of quiet earth? When reasonable words could have solved the quarrel for Helen. Now they lie deep in the lap of dead. Helen, your heart wears grief on grief, and brave Menelaus wrings tears from every eye. You, who with learned patience plod remotest realms of toilsome thought, can you by searching find out God or bound his nature? Look at man. From want to wealth, now forced, now back, now tossed and faint in infamy by unforeseen, ambiguous chance. Zeus was your father, Helen. Winged like a swan, he swooned to plant you and lead his womb. Yet your name was shouted with execration through cities of Hellas, east to west, breaker, breaker of man's, man's law and gods, breaker, breaker of faith. faith. So, so now, now I, I cannot tell what, what mortal utterance may be called sure, sure, but the truth is found in the mouths of gods. Menelaus died. The most hideous of 
deaths drowned in the salt sea. Ah. <laughs> a slave is sometimes luckier than a king. Well, where has he left his great ship? At the bottom of the sea. Ah. Oh, my purse on it. If only Menelaus had lived. Oh, but Menelaus was drowned. Which vessel brought this man here? Sailors found him and picked him up. So he says. What of the phantom that was sent in your place, Christian? The phantom's a jail. Priam and his people, they perished. Nothing. And I was involved in their disaster. For nothing. You leave your husband's body unburied? Or? Yes, unburied. Unburied. This is why you cut your golden locks. I loved him long ago. I love him still. It is true then, Helen. This is really what you are weeping. Would it be easy for me to deceive your sister? Not. Well, are you going to remain clinging to this tomb? I shrink from you out of loyalty to my husband. Why? Must you still remember him? I will not anymore. Now you may begin preparing for our marriage. Then, long in coming, make me happy. You know what must be done. Let us forget the past. Oh, I must be gracious in return. What must I do? Let us call a truce and be friends. And with my anger, I renounce it. I fling it to the wind. Then since you are my friend, I fall at your feet. I claim you as a suckling. What do you desire? I want to bury my husband who has died. What? A grave without a body? You want to bury his ghost? It is custom in Hellas when a man is lost at sea to prepare an empty winding sheet to perform the rites of ceremony. It is true the sons of Caleb are very skilled in such matters. If you perform what is you build a tomb for him anywhere you wish. We do not build tombs on land for men who go down with their ships. What then? I know nothing of your custom. We drop into the sea gifts that are due to the dead. What shall I provide for you? This man comes. I have no experience. Such a loss is new to me. Hello, you. You brought me happy news. Well, it is not happy for me, nor for the dead. How do you bury those who are drowned in sea? It varies depending upon the dead man's means. Well, I will spare no expense for a lake's sake. You must tell me what I must do. First, there must be an offering of blood to the powers of the earth. Well, what sort of beast should we offer on the earth? Must be Whatever you give will be suitable. Our custom here is to give a horse. But be sure the beast is without blemish. <laughs> My herds are very large. We have perfect beasts in plenty. Next, we bring rugs and coverlets, as it were, for a bed. You shall have them. What else? Weapons and armor. He was a soldier. Arms I give you shall be fit for a son of Thanos. Oh, and finally, oh, the offering of fine fruit of every sort your soil produces. Good. And then how do you lower these gifts into the sea? There must be a ship manned with rowers. How far must the ship go to shore? Until its white wake is hardly visible. What? You achieve this that, that the waves may not wash our pol pollution back ashore. Huh. You shall have a Phoenician bar to swim the land. Oh, that is well. You are generous <coughs> to me, Menelaus. Cannot you perform these rites alone? Without Helen. The burial of the dead must be performed by mother, by, by wife. My child, I mean, this observance is Helen's duty. Yes. Those who fear the gods do not scant the service of the dead. Let her go. <laughs> Let her go. I would wish my wife to be a god fearing woman. You go indoors. You make all arrangements you need. You take whatever you like. Helen is pleased with your work. I will not send you away at the end. But it will figure as you are. You have brought me welcome news. We shall have clothing for your nakedness and food to welcome return to your own country. Helen, do not wear yourself out in this place this weekend. And sorry for you, but the place has met its fate. The dead cannot come back to life. It is your duty to obey, my lady. You must accept the husband who stands before you. Forget the one whose claim is ended. Present position, this will be best for you. And if I come safely home to Hellas, I will put an end to the evil tales about you. To be the wife you should be to your husband. I will. 
and you shall be there to see that my husband will have no cause to blame you. But now go indoors and have a bad for the head and change your clothes. I will give you your reward at once. After all, you are more likely in performing what is due to my beloved Menelaus. You have found me properly grateful. There was a time, they say, when the great mother ran to and fro, frantic over the mountains, through green glades of forest, scanning the swirl of every river, scouring the deep voice swell of the salt ocean, searching in anguish for her lost Persephone, made of mysteries. And then, with a shrill shout, rang out the ecstatic symbol. The Phrygian lions were yoked, and in her gorgeous chariot, the goddess rode to seek Persephone. Stolen from the dancing ring of girls. Beside her sports like rollers, the virgin goddesses, Artemis armed with invincible arrows. Athene with spear and gorgon shield. And then from the throne of heaven, Zeus saw, saw their purpose, and the will of Zeus went a different way. way. Now, when weary and bewildered, the great mother ceased her swift searching over the mountains. In despair for her stolen daughter, she climbed the dazzling snowbound summits, sacred to the nymphs of Ida. And at her command, the swelling torrents that leapt down the mountain gorges were swallowed in the sink of the sea. And the cattle were starved on the brown plains. The sapless earth could bear no fruit. The child died in the womb. And on cities, a deathly silence fell. No altar flamed with holy oil. Even the shining springs the goddess forbade to flow in frenzy of grief for her lost child. So when the Phrygian mother had compelled mortals and gods to cease from banquety, to soothe her, Zeus the king spoke to the graces, those dread deities. Go to the goddess of earth, who is angry still for her stolen virgin child. Trust her resentful heart with melody, and let the muses lend their skill dancing and singing. First of the glorious immortals was Aphrodite, who raised high the bronze symbols, like voice like subterranean flame, and leathern tapers rattling wild. And, and the, the goddess mother smiled, and her hands received the flute of sonorous song, which and filled her heart, heart with music like its own. But the maid had sinned in childish innocence, breaking her fast in the dark rooms of earth. And the yoke of Zeus and the son of Zeus appointed a holy day, slaughtering the the bulls and banqueting. A fearful power fills the bright dapple of bulls of the plump green cloak. Fills the young ivy shoot, weaving around the sacred fen of wand. Godhead itself is seen in an ecstatic hand held high in the wind, whirling tambourine. And this dread deity who goes blazing with glory on every hand, she pardons none of taste the forbidden fruit. My dears, all goes well for us in the house. <coughs> the king questioned Theonoi, but she told him nothing of my husband's oh, arrival. Oh, oh, oh. Out of pure kindness to me, she told him the Menelaus was dead. As for my, as for the rest, my husband's own master stroke procured it. He asked for bronze weapons to throw into the sea, and now he's bringing them himself, with his left hand firm on the grip of the shield and his right holding the spear. All this partaking in the ceremonies due to the dead. So he's ready on for the fight. Once we're under Ray, he'll settle accounts with any number of Egyptians. I provided him with clothes instead of rags from that wreck. Oh, <laughs> and at last, after all these years, he's had a proper bath and fresh. <laughs> I must be silent. When it comes to many things, the mayor to be as in his grasp. I beg you, be my friends, guard your tongues. It may be that if we escape someday, we can help you escape too. Who we'll deliver these gifts into the sea to honor him who was once our husband and pass on into order following? This man's instructions. Helen, if I may suggest it, stay here. You will honor your husband equally whether present at the ceremony or not. I am afraid that some grief and frenzy or devotion may drive you to throw yourself into the sea, giving way to sorrow to the much. Especially since his mother's husband to be. Shall see that I shall be a wife to your goodness both deserves. And now 
finish your generosity. You're commanding a ship to be given us to carry these goods. We'll give him a 50 or 20 ship to be Has the Spanish arranged in the burial? Had he better not command the ship? Certainly, my men must take his orders. Repeat that command to make sure your men hear you. Repeat it. You. Good Lord. We'll say it a third time if you wish. Blessings on you. Let's not spoil your beauty with too many tears. Today to show you how grateful I am to you. This is wasted labor. The dead are nothing. I remember both the living and the dead. <coughs> you find in me as good a husband as my lace. It has been wonderful. All I pray is for good fortune. It lies with you. Only give me your heart. Heart now knows where its love belongs. Would you like my husband? Shall I escort you myself? By no means. My lord must not serve his own servants. Wave and Helen. The Greek ritual is nothing to me. My house is clean. It was not here that Menelaus died. Well, someone tell my nobles to bring their wedding gifts to the palace. Celebrate my marriage with Helen. Let the land ring aloud with songs of blessing and music. Stranger, what a liberty to get into the sea if one of us would watch them. You have done it. Bring my wife and I to speed to my palace. You shall share a seat at my wedding table. Afterwards, you can either sell half of the palace or you can happily hear. Zeus, name the father of men, the compassionate. Look upon us in our peril and save us. As we drag our hopeful fortunes up the steep hill, reach out your hand to help us. With one touch of your finger, and we shall reach the deliverance we long for. Are oh, my past sufferings not enough for me to bear? Oh God, I have blamed you foolishly, and I repent. I have not deserved a perpetual misery. Now my path should be straight. Show me one favor. Now grant me a lasting joy. <laughs> Oars of the east, winged Sidonian galley, flash through the foam spray. Darling of Nereus, dance while the dancing dolphins follow. Now with soft sea breeze, the sea is smooth to the man's rest. The boy was calm, but grave to the daughter of ocean, quietly sings. Now sad spread sails, sails to the breeze. Goodbye to the sheltering port. Rip and pull on the pine wood sweep, and carry in triumph Helen to the harbors of home and the city that Perseus built. What will she see? Perhaps the daughters of Leucippus by the rough Eurotus, or the temple of Pallas if she comes at the time of dancing, or on the enchanted night when the Spartans revel for Hyacinthus. From Apollo killed by chance, with his discus thrown in the game of throws. Perhaps she will see in the dancing ring. The child she left long ago, Hermione, waiting still for the bridal torch's flame. Oh, her wings, wings to tread the air, while the cranes in order of flight shun the wintry rainstorms and seek their, their southern homeland. Swift, obedient to their eldest leader's cry, rising shrill, triumphant, as they near the frontiers of this land, where rainless valleys teem with corn. Turn, you long-necked travelers, where ringed graces with the dancing clouds. And while the Pleiades still are in mid-flight, and Orion rides the darkened sky, swoop down, alight on your rotus, proclaim your news that the taker of Troy, Menelaus, is coming home. Speed along your airy paths, riding sons of Tyndareus, you whose home is heaven and the stars' bright orbits. Helen's brothers, Helen's rescuers, ride on! Skim the green and foam-white bridges on the dark face of the ocean. Bring, breathe soft breath of welcome wings, the gift of Zeus. Lend your sister's fame, slandered as paramour of a foreign prince. Dearly she paid for that hot feud begun when on Mount Ida goddesses came to trial. Though never did Helen sail to the land of Troy, or see the towers that Apollo built. My lord! My lord! My lord! Lord, we knew you were one to, to never harbor suspicion. Now 
now listen to the terrible news I have to tell. What's happened? You must begin looking for another bride. Helen has gone. She's fled the country. Gone? Oh, she left on foot or taken away with us? Menelaus has sailed clean away with her. It was Menelaus who came and told you the tale of his own death. It's terrible news indeed. It's incredible. How did they get away by sea? In the ship you gave that Greek. Briefly, he cleared out your crew and sailed off with your ship. How? I want to know how. So I just suppose that when man can overpower a whole crew single-handed, you were one of them. I will tell you all that took place after we left the palace. As soon as the daughter of Zeus reached the shore with gestures and cries, she made an accomplished pretext of mourning for her husband. So far from being dead, he's there at her side. And we entered the royal dock and launched a Sidonian ship of the first line with a full complement of 50 rowers. Everything was done in order. One man was setting the mast, another placing the oars, others knitting the line of them in a clean row, furling the white sails, dropping the rudders into position by the cords. Now, now, while we were busy, some Greek sailors who had come along with Menelaus must have been watching for the right moment. Now, they were fine, strong-looking men, but wild and unkempt, dressed in rags like castaways. They came towards us on the shore. And as soon as Menelaus saw them, with a fine show of grief in his voice and face, he spoke to them. Oh, you unlucky Greeks. What was your ship? How were you wrecked? We, we are going to pay funeral honors to Menelaus, son of Atreus. His body is lost. This lady, Helen, his wife, will perform the ceremony. Won't you come join us? So they, with their pretended tears, solemnly came on board with their sea offerings. Now to us, that seems suspicious. And some of us remarked there were too many for the ship. However, we took <coughs> your instructions and held our tongues. It was putting that Greek in command that caused the whole disaster! Well, most of the gear being light, we hoisted on board easily enough. But the bull for sacrifice was a different story. <laughs> he stuck in his heels and refused to set foot on the gangway. He bellowed, rolled his eyes, humped his back, looked down his horn, and would not let anyone touch him. Then Helen's husband shouted, Come on, you sackers of Troy! Pick up that bull Greek fashion! Get your shoulders under him and heave him on board!
country obscure. It is a place called Sparta, and my father was Tyndarius. Though some say that Zeus took on the image of a flying swan, and with eagle in pursuit landed on wings to lead of my mother, and so won the act of love by treachery. It may be so. They call me Helen. Now let me tell you the truth of what has happened to me. The three goddesses came to remote Ida, and to Paris for him to judge their loveliness, and beauty was the cause. These were Hera, the lady of Cyprus, and the daughter of Zeus. But Aphrodite promising my loveliness, for what is cursed is ever lovely, to the arms of Paris won her way. Paris left his herds for Sparta, thinking I was to be his. But hangry, Hera angry that she was not given the prize, made void the love that might have been for Paris and me, and gave him not me, but in my likeness, fashioning a living, breeding image out of the sky's air, bestowed this on King Priam's son, who thinks he now holds me, but holds a vanity which is not I. See next how further counsels of Zeus added to my misery. He loaded boar upon Hellenic lands, and upon the unhappy Phrygians, thus to drain our mother earth of the burden of the multitude of humankind. He would also advertise the greatest Hellene prince. The Phrygians fought for me, except it was not I, but my name only held up against the spears in Greece. I myself was sheathed away in films of air, and set down here in the house of Proteus, chosen because most temperate of men, he could guard my safe honor from Menelaus. So here I am. But meanwhile, my ill-adventured lord assembled an armament to track me down the trail of my abduction and assaulted Ilium's towers. That's because of me. I had a lot of the scandal. Lives were lost in numbers. And I, the ever patient, cursed by all. And for the Hellens, who lit the flame of a great war. Why do I go on living then? Yet I have heard from Hermes that I shall yet make my home in Sparta with my lord, and he shall know that I never went to Ilium, nor had a thought of any bed with any other man. Here, Proteus, while yet he looked upon this son we see, to keep my arm my marriage safe. And now that he is dead and hidden in the dark, his son pursues me from my hand. But I, remembering my first husband, cling of subtlety is here, upon the tomb of Proteus, to help to keep my marriage intact. <clears throat> Thus, though I wear the name of guilt and grease, here I keep my body uncontaminated by disgrace. Who is the master of this royal palace? These magnificent precincts, that wonderful pediment suggests the very house of Plutus, the temple of wealth. Because, what do I see? It is the accursed woman, her very image, the murderess who blasted my life and ruined Greece. <laughs> the gods abhor you as the perfect copy of Helen. If I were not standing on foreign soil with this good weapon, I would take your life and pay it for your likeness to the daughter of Zeus. What do you say? Poor soul, who are you? Why do you shrink from me? You say I am like Helen. Why blame me for that? Why hate me because of what happened to her? I was wrong. I let anger get the better of me. The daughter of Zeus is hated all over Hellas. Forget what I said. But who are you? Where do you come from? I am one of those ruined Greeks. No wonder then you hate Helen. But who are you? Of what country? What family? My name is Toyser. My father was Telamon, and I was born and brought up in Salamis. And what has brought you here? The valley of the Nile. I have been driven out of my father's land. I'm an exile. Oh, you must be unhappy. Who was it that forced you out? The man who should have loved me most. My own father, Telemon. But why? Well, such an action means catastrophe for you. I had a brother, Aias. His death at Troy was the cause of it. How? You did not kill him yourself? No. He took his own life with his own weapon. And how did that hurt Aias? I will tell you. You have heard of Achilles, the son of Peleus? He was one of the suitors of Helen. So I have heard. And his death in Troy 
He left his helmet to be competed for by the men who fought with him. And how did that hurt Aeus? He took his own life when the helmet was awarded to another man. So his death was the cause of your exile? Yes, because I did not die at his side. So you too went to the famous city of Iliad. I was in it the death, and I lost my own life for my pains. The city now burnt and destroyed. Utterly. Not even the outline of the walls can be traced. Oh, Helen, Helen, it was for you Troy died. Troy? Greece, too. Untold harm has been done. How long is it since the city was sacked? Seven harvests have been reaped since Troy lay buried. And before that, how long had you been there? Months without number. Ten interminable years. Did you capture the Spartan queen? Uh, Menelaus took her, dragged her off by the hair. Poor woman. Are you telling me what you heard? Or did you see it yourself? I saw her as plainly as I see you now. Is it not possible that the gods made you all imagine this? <laughs> Talk about something else. That is enough of Helen. Then you all really believed it was true. I saw her with my own eyes carried off by Menelaus. And is Menelaus now home with his wife? Not in Argos, certainly, nor in Sparta. That is sad news for those that had hoped for better. He is said to have vanished and his wife with him. Surely all the Argives were sailing home together. They were, but a storm scattered them in all directions. Where were they when the storm fell? Cresting the rollers of the Mid-Aegean. And since then, no one has any news of his landing anywhere. No one. He is generally reported as dead. Dead? What shall I do? And Leda, is she alive? No. Leda is dead and gone. Can it be that Helen's disgrace broke her heart? So they say. She was of royal blood. She hanged herself. And her two sons by Tyndarius. Are they alive or dead? Dead? And not dead. Of them there are two different accounts. Tell me the truer. Oh, my poor mother, how can I bear it? It is said they were deified in the form of stars. That would be well. And what was the other? That uh, shame for their sister drove them to take their lives with the sword. But enough of tales. I have wept for these things once already. My reason for coming to the king's palace here was to see the prophetess Theodoy and ask for divine help in getting a fair wind for Cyprus. Will you take me to her? An oracle of Apollo told me I was to settle in Cyprus and give to that land the name of Salamis in remembrance of the other island where I was born. From here to Cyprus is plain sailing, but you must get clear of this land before Theoclemenus sees you. He is the king of this palace, and at present he is away slaughtering wild beasts with the aids of hounds. Every Greek that he catches you, he kills. Why, don't ask me, I won't tell you. What good would it do you? Yeah, just as you say, and thank you for telling me. The gods reward you for your kindness. You are like Helen, only in appearance. In heart, you are utterly different. I pray she may never reach home, but come to a bad end. But you, good luck be with you always. <laughs> strong grief says strong lamenting. Who shall be patted and pardoned of my crying soul? What tearful toll can match deep pain paid by silent misery? Come, silent maidens, young and light of wing, come with Libyan flute, with pipe and string, bring music for my despair. Couple note to note, pain with my pain. And when solemn chance dare to depart and souls ring through the vaulted shades of death, Hear and accept the Queen Persephone echoes of my heart's agony, echoes to fill my heart's deficiency. Oh. 
load those I had. Great Troy lies dead. Fire is her monument. And I, in my hated name, must bear the guilt of countless agonies. Countless dead. Lita is dead. For her, my name fastened the noose. My husband's lost from sight. His endless voyage ended in death. My brothers, their country's pride, are seen no more riding like thunder through the reedy marsh, or wrestling with their fellows by the stream. We for Helen, victims of destiny, locked cruelly with the gift of life. One to Royalty, heroism. 
That way of escape hurts and I shrink from it. What a death of desperation. Beauty is a blessing to other women. It reduces me to this. Helen, you cannot assume that this Greek, whoever he may be, told you nothing but the truth. He told me clearly enough that Menelaus was dead. Many tales might be clear and yet not true. The truth itself is often bewildering. You dwell on the worst that may happen instead of the best. Fear grips me and drives me to the thought that I dread. Tell us, how much good will have you in the palace? And you're all my friends, except for the man who's bent on marrying me. Then listen, listen. this is what you must do. Leave your Leave sanctuary your sanctuary here, here and go to Leave sanctuary? What are you suggesting? Go, go to, to the house of Theonoi, daughter of the sea. She possesses all knowledge. Why are her whether your husband is alive or dead? And Why? then you may rejoice or weep accordingly. Before you know for certain, what do you gain by grieving? Do as I say, yes. Leave this too. Go, go to the annoy, and, and, and you will know everything. When you have here in the palace, one who can tell you the truth and is also your friend. Why look further? I will willingly go myself and join with you in asking for a divine revelation. We must to help each other. Friends, I will do as you say. Into the palace, quickly in. We are ready. This is a day of fear. What answer waits to be heard? What doom of tears? What glory sure of the words can we too soon? What bitter fate has my husband found? Does he even live to see the sun? Charity the sky? Or has his life begun?
Celebrated pair of sons. In fact, my opinion is, I say this without any wish to boast, that we marshaled the greatest of armadas against Troy, monarch showing our authority not to superior force, but to the willing obedience of the fighting men of Hellas. Many of those men are dead. Many others. The exact figure is ascertainable. Rejoice in a happy escape from the perils of the sea, and have returned home bringing with them tokens and keepsakes of those who died. But I, through all the years since I overthrew the towers of Troy, have been an unhappy wanderer upon the stormy waste of the great ocean. I'd long to reach my own country, but the gods have not thought me worthy have sailed into every desolate landing place, every hostile port on the Libyan coast. Every time I near the coast of my own country, a storm drives me away. No favoring wind ever fills my sail to bring me home. Now here I am on this coast, a wretched castaway, all my friends lost, our ship broken into a thousand pieces against the rocks but a curiously fitted keel remained intact. And on this, with much difficulty, and much to my surprise, I was able to get ashore, and with me, Helen, whom I dragged off from Troy. What country this is, what nation inhabits it, I have no idea. I could have inquired, but I preferred not to meet people in my present embarrassing costume, which, ugh, Decency yeah. demands should be kept out of sight. A man accustomed to high position feels misfortune more than one inured to it. I am, in fact, exhausted. No food, no clothes. These rags I have on are all I could save from the wreck, as anyone can see. <laughs> <laughs> My usual clothes rich cloaks, soft gowns. Sea has taken them all, but I have my wife, the source of all my sufferings. And before coming up here, I hid her in a cave together with the survivors of my crew for safety, and I ordered them to guard her for me. I have come alone to procure any supplies I can find for them. When I saw this palace, I immediately approached it over the high surrounding wall. The imposing entrance indicate a man of wealth. Sailors in need may hope for something from a well-stocked house. Otherwise, we shall die. For a whole ship's crew, if they can get no supplies, can give no help, however willing. Hello there, Porter. Come, come to the door and take a message in for me. I need help. Who's there at the door? <laughs> I may speak bluntly, for I have no time to spare. Come on, undo the bolt. Now you just get away from here. My orders are that no Greek shall enter this house. Oh, oh look here. Do not push me about or shake your finger at me. It's your fault. You won't do as I tell you. Oh, go and tell your master that I am here. I wouldn't take the risk of delivering oh. your message. But you will not dare to harm me. I am a shipwrecked man. Then go away to some oh. other house. <laughs> I won't. I'm coming in. Do as I tell. I tell you, you're going down for all that. If only I had my army here. <laughs> Perhaps you were grand somewhere, but not here. Because I should suffer such indignity. Oh, tears in your eyes. Who oh, do you think is sorry for you? Oh. 
gosh, for once kind to me. <laughs> then go away and bestow your tears on your friends. <laughs> what country is this? Whose is this palace? This is Proteus' palace, and the country is Egypt. Egypt? Oh, could anything be worse? <laughs> what a place to have reached. How dare you speak oh, ill of the jewel of I did not, I did not. I was groaning at my own misfortune. Many are unfortunate. You are not the only one. Is this king, uh, whatever you call him, <laughs> is he <Yeah>. at home? <laughs> this is his tomb. <laughs> Son graves now. Then where is his son? At home or away? He is not at home, and he is a bitter enemy to all Greeks. Why does he hate the Greeks so unhappily for me? Helen is in this palace, the daughter of Zeus. What? What did you say? Say that again. The daughter of Tyndareus that used to live in Sparta. But, where did she come from? What can this mean? Why, she came here for black and diamond. When? Surely my wife cannot have been stolen out of the cave. Before the Greeks went to Troy, my friend. But get away from this house. There's an extraordinary trouble that's upsetting us right now. And, and we're all very upset about it. And if my master <laughs> sees you, you're welcome, Will be. <laughs> I'm afraid to you, Grace, in spite of what I said, I spoke harshly for fear of my master. What can this mean? What can I think? Is it possible that I should capture my wife in Troy, bring her here and hide her in a cave for safety, and now find a woman with the same name as my wife living in this palace? But she said this woman was the daughter of Zeus. Can there be a man by the name of Zeus living on the banks of the Nile? <laughs> There's only one Zeus, the one on Olympus. Are there two men named Tyndarius? Is there another like a diamond? Another Troy? I don't know what to think. Well, after all, the world's a big place. No doubt there are many women with the same names, many towns too. There's really nothing to wonder at, nor is there anything to be afraid of in an old woman's threats. No man could be so uncivilized as to refuse me food. Well, now once he heard my name, the fire of Troy is famous. So is the man who lit it, known all over the world, Menelaus. We'll wait for the master of the house. Things to look out for. He is a savage. I must first hide myself and get back to the ship. But if he shows any softness, I must be sure to ask for the supplies that we need. This then was the final humiliation in store for me that I should beseech a fellow king for bread to keep me alive. Well, I must. Nothing is stronger than necessity. I did not invent that proverb, but it is true nonetheless. <laughs> and very well known. Sick 
with travel and stripped of friends has ground a king in his voyage from Troy. On every shore, these weenies stand wide. He back. Now back to my place of sanctuary. But Theodore's answer has warmed my heart. She says openly that my husband is alive. Something strange to judge by the state that you are in. All oh, this <laughs> endless suffering for nothing. Well, that is no news to me. Tell me what has happened. Oh, your wife is gone. Vanished into the air. Just went up and disappeared. <laughs> now that she's in the sky, the cave where we were guarding her is empty. But before she left, she said, Oh, you poor, pitiless Trojans and your suffering grief. It was a trick of Herod that sent you to your deaths on the bank of the Scamander. Paris did not possess Helen as you fought. And now that I've stayed as long as I have to stay, 
I am going back as the fates decree to the sky that formed me. Those who he curses on hell and I are mistaken. She did no wrong. <laughs> oh, there you are, daughter of Lena. You were here all the time. I've been reporting you as going to the region of the stars, not being aware that you had wings. <laughs> now, you won't. I'll not let you do the same trick again that you did. You gave enough trouble to your husband and his friends at Troy. It's true. This proves it. All she said is confirmed. Oh, Helen. <laughs> oh, I have longed for this day. Longed to take you in my arms. Well, now you are mine. Year after endless year crept by, and now joy has come for you are here. Women, I laugh for joy. My husband is mine once more, and my arms are round his neck. <laughs> he comes like a glare of flame, lighting my dark despair. And you are mine. Well, so much since then has passed. What should I tell? What ask you, first or last? My hair wings wild in the wind for joy. My eyes are brimming, while my hands fill your dear form. It tastes pleasure so long denied. Oh, oh no dearer sight than this. All grief forgotten. Daughter of Zeus, you are mine to have and hold. I claimed you once when the godly twins, your brothers, rode their white horses under the torchlit night, and their echoes of blessing rang out again and again, once so long ago. Then Hera stole you away, and my house was empty. Now heaven leads us on from this happy meeting to a still happier day. Good defeat so once more. We are united, though joy was long on its way. Now fortune smiles, and may blessings follow. Blessings indeed. We too pray the same prayer. For your fate and hers are one. You cannot suffer and she be saved. Friends, payment is past is lost its sting. My husband is mine once more, and my long despair is over. We have each other. In truth, I dimly guess as the endless chain of tedious days wore on, the Queen of Gods was at work. Oh, there's more joy in my tears than all the sorrow of all the past. Bliss beyond words, sweeter than heart could hope. I hold you close to my breast. Oh, you divine, I who we thought was living in the shadow of Mount Ida, behind the sad battlements of Troy. Oh, Helen, how did you steal from home that day? The story you seek began in pain. No. Rule to suffer, rule to recount again. Tell me, for every mortal must accept God's gifts as best we may. How can I speak? The words will choke me. Speak for my sake. I felt no guilty lust. I did not fly over the sea to seek the unlawful bed of an eastern prince. What God, what fate then stole you from me? Hermes conveyed me here, to the banks of the Nile. The son of Zeus, at whose command? I wept long since, and now I weep again for fear. My enemy is the queen of Olympus. Hera, how have we incurred her curse? Who reproaches I have borne flowed from that fountain source? where the three bright immortals came to adorn their beauty on which the famous judgment was then given. Why must Hera's fight be vented on you for judgment she resented? To spoil Paris as a bride the Cyprian promised him. Of you. She sent me to this desert land, weeping. And in your place a flight of phantom, Helen, all too true. At home there is more sorrow yet. My mother. What of her? Is dead. She tied the news with her own hand, believing I had shamed your bed. Oh, God, what of Hermione? What joy has she? What hope to get husband or child when all men point at me? Paris, you who have murdered my whole house, your deed has brought death to you and your city and to 10,000 well-armed men of Greece. And I am cursed, unhappy, not untrue, exiled for force, guiltless of broken vows. And robbed of city, home, my husband, and my peace. If only you meet with good luck for the future, you will compensate for all that is past. Menelaus, I realize that something has made you happy, but I have not grasped what it is. Could you share with me your good fortune? Of course, I must share it with you, old fellow. <laughs> 
Well, now, is not this lady here, Helen, the prize of all we went through at Troy? This lady was never at Troy. We were tricked by the gods. The Helen we captured was a phantom to make fools of us. All oh, that sweat and blood for a ghost! Yes. Oh, Hera was in a rage because of the judgment of Paris. Oh, is not this lady here, then, the one who is your wife? She is. You must take my word for it. Oh, my daughter! Oh, the ways of the gods are elaborate and complicated, but they bring good and bad fortune alike. But all is for the best. One man suffers, but in his time he prospers and beyond his hope. Another man does not suffer, but one day the luck he has had through the years catches up with him and he perishes miserably. <laughs> so you and your husband have had your share of ill fortune. You were badly spoken of and he was subject to the storms of war. As long as he struggled to get what he wanted, he gained nothing. Ah, but when the fortune came of its own accord, he was a happy man. Oh, and you need not blame yourself what happened to your dear father and your two brothers. This world has said wrong things about you. Oh, oh, how well I remember your wedding day. I can see it all now. The horses yoked and four and me carrying a torch alongside. And you and Menelaus in the carriage, leaving your happy home to be married. Oh, excuse me, but the slave. The affairs of his master, Mimaladi, shares in the joys and sorrows of life. Oh, I was born in the but I am gone. Noble slaves who were free in their mind, if not in their name. And I'd like to be one of those. Otherwise, you have two misfortunes. You have to take orders from all of those around you. Feel like a slave at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Will you join your full spirit of Christ in the right way of being able to see? Now that you're here to see him on this occasion, go back to the others and what is happening. Explain the present situation. Warn them to wait on the coast and be prepared to see the answer to the fight for the best of us. If you explain it in the right way of getting my wife out of this place, after meeting so miraculously, they must see to it that we are not helped by the nation. I'll do it, my lord. And I'll tell you, I have experience of prophets. Don't expect anything from them but silliness and lies, shapes of sacrifices, songs of birds. Why, it means nothing. What can a bird do for mankind? It's all foolishness. Helgus saw his friends die in battle for the sake of phantom, and yet he gave neither word nor sign. Oh, and so too, Helenus, the Trojan, and his setting the sack for nothing. Now you may say that the gods should have said something to the men did. But why consult prophets? Rather go to the gods offer to sacrifice. No man ever achieved wealth without labor by studying sacrifice. The best oracle is care and common sense. In my tone, you will have to return to Sorry, my best. He's capable of speaking. Leave the rest. Then tell me one thing. How many years have you wandered over this salt sea? We were in Troy for ten years. And it rained. 
Not, I am already familiar with misfortune, and your reward will be infamy. I will make my appeal for the just treatment which I claim to deserve, my appeal for the sympathy of your inmost heart. As a suppliant before the tomb of your father, Elijah Proteus, guardian spirit of this marble tomb, restore to me my wife, whom Zeus sent to you here in trust for me. Death, I know, forbids that I should receive her from your own hands. But surely your daughter will not allow that men should call you from the grave to curse your once noble name. We are in her hands. Lord of the underworld, you too I call upon for help. You have received the bodies of many men that fell by my hand. You have your payment. Be the restore now of dead to life. Did Theodore prove herself more righteous than this impious king by giving me my wife? And if you and the king steal my wife from me, I will tell you now what she has left unsaid. You must know, Theodore, that I have bound myself by solemn oaths. First, to engage your brother in combat till one of us kills the other. That is final. And you will not beat me but besieges us with hunger here in our sanctuary. And I am resolved first to kill Helen, then myself, here upon the slab of this monument, that our blood may stream down upon Proteus's grave. We will both lie dead together on this polished stone to wring your heart and to soil your father's name forever. Neither your brother nor any other man shall take Helen. I shall take her myself. My home is possible. Not the, to the dead! What is this? Tears? Because my eyes are woman and she may think me readier to sue than do. Kill me if that is your mind. Crime will brand you. Make the wiser choice. Do what is just and right. <coughs> Let me have my wife. You must not judge me each has said. Make a decision that will satisfy everyone. Both nature and inclination prompt me to piety. I love myself. And I am not anxious to cloud my father's good name. While my brother, I must try to refuse any service that you. would turn his honor. So I will try to say this. If Hera wishes to help you, then I cast my vote with her. For Aphrodite, may she forgive me. But I have never had no words with her in the past. And I will grow old a virgin as I am now. To appeal to my father to vindicate this honor is going to I myself To refuse to deliver your wife to you would be to wrong you. And if he will live over, he would certainly restore you to each other. Right and wrong are rewarded in every country on earth, and less not among the dead. The mind of one departed may not have life, but it has become one with the immortal spirit that has the immortal understanding. So to be brief, I will do as you request me to keep silent to be no accomplice to my brother's wickedness. Indeed, I do a true service by turning his impious intent to righteousness. I will leave you to yourselves and say nothing. You must discover the true way of escape. Let your first thought be of the gods and pray that Aphrodite may allow you a safe voyage home and that Hera 
No. She changed the bulk of your welfare. May not change her mind. My father, I promise you. There's no need of mine or ever to face my highest humor. It is never prosperous. Her focus may be on its reward. For as far as she is concerned, we are safe. As the rest makes some suggestions, together we must block our escape. Yeah. Listen to that. You have lived in the palace a long time. You're perhaps intimate with the servants? Yes. Oh, it seems to me. Tell me your plan. Perhaps you could get one of them to get us a fast vehicle. Well, good. How should we escape if we then this plane with the gypsies all around us? No, it's impossible. I could hide in the palace. I have my weapon. I could kill the king. Theodore would never allow her brother to be killed. She would warn him. Oh. Yeah. Sure, we cannot escape. Our ship is at the bottom of the ocean. A woman's plan might succeed. Will you let me invent the story of your day? I can buy no more. If there is something solid to be gained, I will die. Nancy! I will approach this baby king in mourning and weeping. Now! How will that help our escape? Your plan seems a bit old fashioned. I will tell him that you are drowned at sea. And that's the Suppose he agrees, give me a gift to you, but not in your escape without a ship. Then I will ask you to provide it. By which you may drop your offerings into the lap of the sea. It is a good plan, except for this. If he tells us to perform the rites on land, your story will be of no use. Then I'll tell him to get three customs to perform those rites on land for those who grab the ship. That will do, and then I will come on board with you to help with the ritual. Yes, you will force the chief and all of those who survive the rest. Uh, once I get my hands on the ship at anchor, my men will be there armed and dangerous. You must be back. I'll be prepared for favoring men in a strong voice. We will have it. The gods are going to be kind. By the way, who are you told you that? Who will you say told you that I was dead? You. The same as you was a soul survivor, but I could use so many ladies as well. Yes, and this sail I'm tied around me will confirm your story of the wreck. Oh, you were called a girl of guilt. You have been in the sight of the great savior. Did I not talk about two doors with you? Stay here. If you drive by, you can prove your protection. And you have your reverence. I will go inside of you. I stand by the way for more you black. Cut my hair short and tear my face with my nails till the blood runs. I must do it. There is no third way. King realized our deception. I will be killed. Tara, we pray to you, stretching our arms towards heaven where you live in star of northern heights. Take pity on us and save us. Why are you never saved with moral sufferings? You traffic in lust and falsehood. Who get intrigue and secret drugs of your instruments of death? Whether but measure in your power, no other gives gift as sweet as yours. That is all I can say.
Listen, 